So this morning, I am starting my uh, a message again. We're back in that series of words for life, and um, and some words speak speak life to us. Thanks speaks gratitude. Sorry speaks I'm sorry. Um, um, uh, giving a give speaks uh, speaks gratitude. Hope communicates trust to us. Today, I want to talk with you about about peace. About peace. Peace in our lives. The definition for peace is, uh, it's a noun. It means freedom from disturbance, tranquility. That's according to the Oxford Di- Dictionary, freedom from disturbance or tranquility. So this morning, just before I, just before I pray, I want, to, uh, I want to illustrate something this morning. I've asked Ginger to help me. So harmony, h- how many of you enjoy four-part harmony? Love four-part harmony. Uh, when I, I don't know much about music, but I could hear it, and I used to be able to sing it. And I uh, love four-part four harmony. And, and harmony, as I understand it, and some reading, and I, and, I, and I spoke with Ginger about this, harmony, four-part harmony, is where each voice or each note, if it's an instrument, is playing a different note in, this, in a single chord. In other words, it's a, it's a single chord. And for those that aren't musical, um, it, is, it forms a, a cohesive whole. In other words, each part, each voice or each instrument is playing a different, a different note, but it's in the same chord. And I asked Ginger to play harmony, play, play harmony so we could hear harmony this morning. Can you hear harmony? Everybody hear harmony? That's harmony. Then I also, also asked her to play dissonance. Dissonance is the opposite. It means where there is tension in the notes because they are not in the same, same chord. Play something that's dissonant for us. Okay, you hear it? Play harmony again. All right, play harmony again, okay, and play dissonance again. You hear the difference there? All right, good. Thank you, Ginger, very much. Ginger said, please don't make me stand up there long. I want you to keep that in mind because we're talking about peace and harmony here in just a minute. So join with me, and let's read the scriptures this morning. I'm actually going to read three scriptures because there's a theme. There's a theme that's in them. John 14, 27 says this, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. In the third scripture, Colossians three fifteen. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Can somebody say amen? Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Father, I thank you and I praise you this morning for the privilege we have of worshiping you, Lord, of lighting the stage, of singing worship songs to you, and of coming to your word. And I pray that you illuminate, Holy Spirit, your word to us today. Speak to us about your peace in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Harmony, again, remember, is all the parts, all the voices playing a different note, but in the same chord. Disharmony or dissonance, dissonance, if it will, is when, uh, when there is tension. Uh, there's tension between it. And here's the reason I make that. Harmony in music is an example of peace in your life. Harmony in music is an example of peace in your life. In other words, being on the same chord with God, being on the same chord with others, being on the same chord even in life as a whole, your life as a whole needs to be on the same chord. And if there's a place of strife, then that is a place of discord or disharmony. In fact, um, last night I, I got an example of it. came out of nowhere, and I thought, that's my message right there. Um, I, text, I text last night, um, about 8 o'clock or so I text, was texting all of you about the, uh, about the message today and uh, about that it was going to be on peace. And somebody texted me back. Um, I'm not going to mention any names. They, uh, it, I'm not mentioning names, it is the mother of our piano player, but other than that, I won't mention any names. <laughs> Text me back and said, a lot of people are going to need some peace today after that ball game. <laughs> and I said, yeah, yeah. She said, then she said this, and this is what really got me. She said this, she said, it didn't make any difference to me because my favorite teams are Georgia and Alabama. And I said, I said, that is not right. I said exactly what Ginger, I said, that is not right. That, that is a perfect example of disharmony. 
You can't do that, right? <laughs> something is off. Something is, and, and, but, but seriously, in your life, if, if it doesn't, like, if you're not in the same chord, right? If something's off, you feel the tension. You feel the dissonance. You feel the disharmony. So I want to talk about that for a moment. From these three scriptures, I want to talk about that. And then I'm going to give you six words or descriptions to help us understand peace and four things you can actually do to generate more peace in your life. So let's talk about this, this scripture here first. First, I want you to notice that there is a direct connection between peace and heart in all three of these verses. Can uh, Devin, I'm sorry, I apologize to you. I give Devin instructions, and then sometimes I just do something totally different. But So thank you. The, in each of these verses, I want you to notice that there is a connection between peace and heart. All three of them. Peace I leave with you, let not your hearts be troubled. The peace of God transcends all understanding and guards your hearts and minds. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. There's this connection. The word peace in these verses is the word Irene, Irene, and it means harmony or quietness or rest or calm, biblically. This is not an Oxford definition. This is of Greek definitions. It means peace means harmony. In fact, that's the word that occurs more often than any other word in the definition in the Greek and Hebrew definitions is the word harmony. It means quietness, rest, and calm. Heart, heart here is the word cardia, cardia, where we get our word cardio. It's the word heart, and it means the inner self, the seat of the life, the soul that is the mind, the will, the emotions, and the conscience of an individual. So look what these verses are telling us when you understand that that's what peace is. Peace is harmony. Heart is the inner soul, the inner person, the seed of life. Notice what these verses are telling us. John 14, 27 is telling us this, that Jesus gave us harmony, his harmony in our soul. Come on, somebody. Jesus gave, Brittany, Jesus gave us his harmony in my soul. You know what? When I am lined up on the same core, when I'm in line with God, when there is, when there is harmony in between me and God, I've got to tell you, I do have a melody of peace in my heart when I am in harmony with God. Come on, somebody. And Jesus said, Jesus said that he gave us that harmony in life, not as the world gives not as the world gives. The world can't give you that harmony, but Jesus gave us that harmony in our life. Therefore, our hearts are at peace. Notice what Philippians chapter 4 verse 7 says. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. Notice what this says here. This verse tells us that the harmony, the peace of God, that harmony that God gives us and puts in our heart, transcends our understanding. Come on. Listen, listen, listen. aren't you glad this morning... That the harmony, the peace that God put in your heart is bigger than, greater than, overarching, overrides all that I understand. Because there's a lot in my understanding that I don't understand. Hello? Anybody can identify this morning? There's a lot within our realm of understanding that I just simply don't understand. But I can tell you this. The harmony that Jesus Christ, the peace that Jesus Christ put in my heart, it is greater than. It transcends my understanding in life and therefore it guards my hearts and minds I'm glad this morning that my heart I have heart protection my heart is guarded by the harmony of Jesus Christ the peace of Jesus Christ even when I do not understand now listen that's real that's real Nothing in our life gives more, uh, uh, is more taxing on the body than stress and anxiety in life, especially from things that we do not understand. I am thankful, though, Gloria, that in my life, in my heart, when I do not understand, my heart is protected by the peace and the harmony of Jesus Christ. That'll change your life, church. That'll change your life. Then notice what Colossians 3 and 15 says. Colossians 3 and 15 says this. The harmony, watch this, the harmony of Christ has reconciled your life to God. Therefore, you can trust it and let it rule in your life. In other words, you are going to be ruled by something. You're going to be ruled by harmony or dissonance. You're going to be read by, uh, led by peace or by disturbance. What is it you're going to let rule your life? You and I get to determine what rules our life. I want to choose the peace and the harmony of God to rule my life. Doesn't mean, 
every place in my life is going to be peaceful. It doesn't mean every place in my life is going to be easy. It doesn't mean everything in my life is necessarily going to work out exactly like I want. It does mean that what rules my life, what controls my life, what occupies me is the peace of God, the harmony of God in your life and in my life. So what does that mean for us? What's the point of all this? Here it is. It's on your outline there. The peace that Christ gives is a harmony in your soul that gives security and confidence to life. I believe that with everything in me. The peace of God is a harmony in your soul that gives security uh, and that gives confidence to life. When you, have, when you are at, at peace with God, you have the peace of God. When there is the harmony of God in your heart, it gives you a confidence and a security in life. It, uh, it helps you. The fears and the anxieties and the worries of life that come um, are, 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 are present. They are there, but they do not rule my life. I have a security and a confidence because I am in harmony with God. I'm not playing dissonance in my life. I am uh, tuned in. I'm on the same chord with him. Him, it gives harmony and peace in my life. And i got to tell you something. Jesus said it best. This harmony, this state of being in the, same, uh, in the same chord with Jesus is greater than anything the world can offer. The world cannot give you. Listen, the world cannot play the part. The world cannot play the parts that create harmony with God. That has to come with Jesus Christ, His Word, and His Holy Spirit. You and I walk in harmony with God because Jesus is playing the chords in our heart. He is singing the melody in our heart. His Word is, is what's pressing the keys in our heart. He gives us harmony in our life, and it brings peace to our lives. It brings peace to our lives. That's why, that's why, in fact, that verse, Colossians chapter uh, 3 verse 17. That verse actually is interesting. The context of it says this. It says, let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, for so you were created to dwell in peace. You understand what he's saying there? What he's saying there is this, is that Judy and Glenn can be playing a different note, but if we are on the same chord with God, there's going to be harmony there. Come on, somebody. That Mike is going to do different things different than Glenn. We may play different notes, but as long as we are on the same chord with the Holy Spirit, there will be harmony, there will be unity uh, in lives. Same thing with your marriage. You Listen, everybody is not the same. Everybody is not uh, the exact same person. You weren't created the same. And But if you're on the same chord, you may be playing different notes, but there will be harmony in your marriage and harmony in your life. How many of you know that's true? Happy wife, happy life. Right? Harmony. Say it with me. Harmony. Yes. Dean says hallelujah, amen. I can identify with that after 50 years. So what's the word on peace? I want to give you a word this, this morning, and then I want to start with, uh, talking to you just a little bit about these descriptions, because that's going to help us get a better grasp on what we're talking about here this morning. One of my favorite verses, I've committed it to memory, John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that you may, be, may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. <laughs> so, come on, you, say it with him. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Amen. Amen. There it is again, peace and heart together. You cannot have peace without harmony in your heart with God. So what does that look like? What does that look like on every day? And here's what I want you to, I want you to fill in your, uh, your sheets that are there. Six words, six things that come to mind that help me understand what this peace and, uh, is about. First of all, the first one's going to be obvious. Six words that describe peace is harmony. I've already spoken quite a bit about that, and that's the root of what I'm talking about this morning, but I want to include that word. Peace really is harmony with God in your life, in your mind, your will, your emotions, your conscience. It is harmony. I've talked about that. The second one is this. I want to expand on it a little bit. Peace is assurance. Peace is assurance. If you're taking notes, peace is assurance. See, peace is not just, as Oxford says, peace is not just the absence of disturbance, right? Peace is 
assurance in the midst of it, no matter what, because you are not alone. You see, the disciples missed, the disciples in the boat missed the peace of God, the assurance of God, when Jesus was in the boat with them. Just think about that for a moment. Think about that for a second. I, I don't, there was no way they could know what was happening. They could, no way they could know the future. There was no way they could uh, predict what was about to happen. But if they had been on the same cord with God when the storm was around, Jesus was asleep in the bottom of the boat, they couldn't know the future. But they, if they had been on the same cord with God, they could know this. If Jesus is in our boat, uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but I can rest assured it is going to be all right. That's assurance. That's peace. That's peace in us. And i got to tell you, in your life, in my life, too, we're the same as the disciples. Sometimes we forget that Jesus is right there with us. There is an assurance when I know he is right there in my life. There's an assurance in that. There's a peace in that. Peace is harmony. Peace is assurance. Peace is relationship. Peace is relationship. First, let me talk about relationship with God. Peace is being in right relationship with God. And I'm not talking about just legally so. I'm talking about being in a practically, personally connected, living relationship with God. Peace, when, in, a, in a personal, living relationship with God, there is peace in that. When I'm living in relationship with Jesus Christ, there is a peace that comes in that. When, when my life, when I am on the same cord, when I'm in living in alignment with Him. In fact, Romans 5, 1 and 2, it's not on your page, but I'll read it for you, says this. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by by faith into this grace which we now stand, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Peace is relationship. But it's not just relationship with God. Peace is relationship, deep personal relationship within, in, uh, within your marriage, with individuals, within the workplace. There is this, when you are in a relationship with someone, uh, it, it, there is this peace that when you are on the same cord that comes with it. And, and, and you and I need to be attuned to that because sometimes even within our own homes, uh, you can find that you're not, you're not on the same, you're not in the same cord. Yesterday, yesterday, Geraldine and I we're finishing the, uh, the invitation. You've got the invitation there. We were at finishing the invitation. And, um, and this, is what, this is what she had in mind. And this is what I had in mind. <laughs> Honestly, I printed it out. I carried it in there and I laid it there on the, on, uh, on the counter there. I laid it there and she just looked at me like, you have lost your mind. And Spirit, she starts describing what she has in mind, and I look at what I have in mind, and I say, we are not on the same cord at all. Right? Can I tell you something? That happens in life. That happens in life. And when that happens in life, it's time to check up and get on the same cord again in your marriage. Get on the same cord with your uh, kids. Get on the same cord with your teenagers, if that's possible. Um, but the point that I'm making this morning is this. It happens in life. But when, listen, but when you are on the same cord in your relationship, there is a peace, right? There's a peace, like Jesus, like uh, Paul said, there's a peace that passes understand. Stuff happens in life, right? You're going to end up on different pages, on different cords. But when you work to get back on the same cord, on the same page, there is a peace in that. Isn't that right? Peace is harmony. Peace is assurance. I'm talking about a word that makes a fundamental difference in our life. It's harmony. Peace is assurance. Peace is relationship. Peace is contentment. Peace is contentment. Peace is the contentment that is expressed in Psalm 23, 1. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Think about what that says. He wrote the rest of the psalm, and he didn't really have to write anything else. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. There there is a contentment when you are in peace, at peace with God, when you are walking in harmony with God, when you are on the same cord with God, there's a peace with that. There's a peace and a contentment that comes in knowing and trusting and believing that in Jesus is all that I need. In fact, somebody, somebody paraphrased Psalm 23.1 and said it this way, the Lord is my shepherd, that's all I want. It's 
It's a great way to paraphrase it, right? Peace is contentment. There is contentment in life. I read this week, Gerald Leonard introduced me to an um, uh, Advent devotional this week, and I read a phrase that just spoke into this sermon, and here's what it says. It takes great maturity to live in holy contentment and holy expectation at the same time. We, we, contentment sometimes wants to damper out expectation, and expectation wants to overrun contentment. But when you're in harmony with God, you can live in holy expectation and holy contentment at the same time. And that, take, that takes place when you live in harmony with God. Is that good? That's good. Peace is harmony. Peace is assurance. Peace is relationship. Peace is contentment. Peace is hope. I spoke on this last week, but I need to mention it here. Peace is hope. Peace is the confidence, the trust, the hope in God for the future. I mean 30 years from now, 40 years from now. I mean next week. I mean today. I mean this very moment. There, there is a, when I am at peace, there is a hope for the future, right? When, I'm, when there's not peace, there, the future gets cloudy and gets confusing. But there is, a, there is a peace that comes, a trust, a confidence, a hope that comes when, when I have trust and confidence in God. The peace is hope. And then the last thing, here's this. Peace is rest. Peace is rest. With harmony and assurance and relationship and contentment and hope comes rest from God. And rest from God brings peace to our soul. Remember Jesus asleep in the bottom of the boat? Jesus was asleep in the bottom of the boat. The storm was raging such that seasoned sailors thought they were sinking. Think about that a moment. Seasoned sailors thought they were sinking. That's how bad the storm was. But Jesus was resting in the bottom of the boat. That's the definition of peace, my friend. And he said he gave you and me that peace in our hearts. Glory to God. That'll change your life. That'll change your life. Peace is Harmony, assurance, relationship, contentment, hope, rest, rest. So what do we do? How do we do that? I wanted to give you, as I was preparing this message, I just said, Lord, we talk a lot about peace, and it's an easy subject to preach on. But help, help me to equip us. How, what are some things, we, what are some places of peace where we can establish the peace of God in our lives on a regular basis? So I want to give you four ways this morning, four places, if you will, of peace that we can start peace in our life. The first one is this, a place of peace to start your day. If you're feeling in the blank, that first one is to start your day. A place of peace to start your day. I'm going to say this to you. You really must find a place to start your day that allows the harmony of God to set the tone for your day. If you're going to live in peace, you really must find a place of peace to start your day so that the harmony of God is what establishes the tone of your life. You know that as soon as you walk out the door, there's going to be a tone to your life. Some of you have experienced some, uh, some incredible tones this week. Some of them not godly at all. I'm telling you, if that's the world you face, you have to start your day at a place of peace. Starting there allows the, the peace of God to set the tone for your life. You know what? I was, I was reading it several years ago. Psycho, um, uh, I believe it's in Psychology Today. It may have been something else. said that the, the single worst thing that people do to disturb their day, psychologically, is to look at their phone before they ever get even not get out of bed. Think about that a moment. The single thing... That in modern culture that we do that disturbs our day more than anything else is we will pick up our phone before we even get out of bed. I'm not going to ask you how many of you did that this morning. But according to statistics, it's most of us. Can I tell you something? Find a place of peace to start your day. Let the tone of God's peace, the harmony of God's peace, set the music, set the tone for your life. That's one thing you must do if you're going to find peace in your life. The second place is this. A place of peace throughout your day. A place of peace throughout your day. In other words, you have to have the ability, you have to develop the ability. It doesn't happen naturally because we move in such a fast-paced, move, move, move world. 
But, but at, at some point, you've got to find the ability to, in the middle of the day, in the hustle and the bustle, and when the things are going nuts like they are, find a way to return just for a few moments to that place of peace. It may be in your car. Um, it, it turn, turn off the music. You know, you can actually ride in your car and not play anything. You can ride in it in quiet, a place of peace. It may be, um, it may be on your lunch break. It, it may be in the middle of the beating. It may be, some of you may can do this, um, it, it, it may be in the middle of a meeting, and, but you have the ability to just close your eyes and go to that place of peace. Listen, if you're going to have peace in your life, you've got to learn to return to that place of peace throughout your day. And what your technique is and how you do it, uh, everybody is different. But I, here's what I find. I, um, for years, I've loved to read about the lives of great men and women of God. And, uh, and here's something that I found in common in their lives. All of them developed that ability in the middle of the day to return to that place of peace regularly throughout the day. Brother Lawrence returned to that place while he was washing dishes. Now, if you haven't read Brother Lawrence's uh, Practicing the Presence of God, you need to read it. It's, a, it's, a, it's an old, centuries-old book. But it's just a short read. But he, he, could, he had walked with God in such a relationship that he could return to that place of peace even in the middle of washing dishes in a monastery. Uh, John G. Lake, who was a, in, a missionary to Africa, uh, from a previous generation, John G. Lake, he returned to that place of peace by going into the African countryside. In fact, on one occasion, a mother had come and laid a child down by the, uh, by the lake there um, in the countryside. And the, uh, he could see from where he was that the child was crippled. And the mother was, the mother was walking. She was going to work. That's all, all the daycare she had in Africa. And John G. Lake slipped over there, prayed for the little boy, and he was healed he was healed of his crippled legs. Uh, the boy jumps up and starts running to his mother. John G. Lake disappears into the woods. Why? Because that place of peace was more important than any glory or any acclaim that might be heaped his way. Susanna Wesley, this is my favorite. Susanna Wesley, you've heard me say it before, it's still my favorite. Uh, the, father, uh, the mother of uh, James, uh, uh, John and Charles Wesley from the Wesleyan movement, who also had uh, 11 other children. God bless her heart. But she was known, she was known that in the middle of the day, she would back up, remember the big, the big kitchen apron, she would back up in the middle of the day and she would take the apron back up in the corner and throw it over her head and find that place of peace. Now with 13 children, you might have been thought she was going crazy. <laughs> but she created a place of peace. You and I need to be able to do that too. Find a way to return throughout your day to that place of peace, whatever works for you. The third thing is this, and I'm trying to finish up. The third thing is this, a place of peace in the storm. In the storm. For all of our talk about peace and calm and tranquility and harmony, we, you and I must find a place in the storm, in the chaos, in the fight. On the worst day of his life, David encouraged himself. When Daniel's life was in danger, Daniel prayed. When John had been boiled in oil and then exiled to the Isle of Patmos, he was in the spirit in the Lord's day. You get the picture here this morning? You and I, you cannot wait till the storm's over, the chaos is over, the fight is over. We have got to find a way to have peace in the storm. And those examples in the Bible are not because those are great, uh, incredible men and women of God, although they are. Those stories are there because they were men and women who faced the same struggles, the same stress, the same battles, and even more so than we do, but they found a way to find peace, access that place of peace in the middle of the storm. And then finally, finally, there's a place of peace to rest, to rest. I really do believe that just like you start your day at a place of peace, you've got to end your day at a piece of place, place of peace. A place where before you retire for the night, you set your mind, your soul on God as you prepare to rest and sleep. I do believe that is crucial. Remember the children's prayer? Remember the children's prayer? Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. You know, that's actually a good practice. That's actually a good practice. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray, Lord, my, my soul, my mind, my will, my conscience, my emotions tonight. I pray you keep it tonight. You keep it in harmony with you. In fact, that's biblical. Let me tell you what Psalm 16, 7 says. I will praise the Lord who counsels me even in the night. He instructs my heart. Hello? You thought you were just sleeping. 
You can ask the Lord. He will instruct your heart in the middle of the night. That's why Proverbs 3 and 24 is true. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, you will sleep where will be sweet. I do believe it's important. Start your day through uh, in a place of peace. Find a place of peace throughout your day. Find a place of peace in the storm. Find a place of peace to rest. And it really begins with, it really begins with, Lord, I want to be in harmony with you today. I want to be in harmony with you. My wife and I, are, are, we really are, there's tension, there's disharmony. I want to be in harmony with you. If we both get in harmony with you, we'll be in harmony with each other. You know that, right? When Gerald and I do premarital counseling, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to finish up here. When Gerald and I do premarital counseling, we, we emphasize the fact that each individual must seek the Lord. Imagine, imagine God at the top, the two of you as the bottom of the pyramid. As you move closer to God, you move closer to each other. You see it? Harmony with God will put you in harmony with your relationship if both of you would do it. It's the same thing. Lord, I need, your, I need your harmony in this meeting that's not going so well. Lord, I need your harmony as I'm about to make this decision. I want to be lined up with you. It's a, it's a decision, a very impactful decision. And I want to be in harmony with you. Lord, going into this doctor's appointment, and I don't know what's going to be said, and I'm just not sure about some of the tests that come back, but Lord, I want to be in harmony with you. You set the tone in my heart for whatever is to come. I trust you, Lord. So here's the main idea for this morning, and I'm going to quit. If you want a peaceful life, Make a place for Christ's peace to fill your life. There it is. In other words, here it is. If you want a peaceful, F-U-L-L, if you want a peaceful life, you have to be peace-filled with the peace, the harmony of Christ. The good news is he has said he has made that harmony ours. He has given it to us. I'll close with this story. Many years ago, Gerald and I were facing perhaps one of, the, one of the two biggest decisions of our married life. The first one was to go into ministry and to, and to, to leave the profession that I had trained so, so hard for. And the, the other one was going into full-time ministry. It was a huge decision for us. God had blessed us. I was both bivocational where I was in ministry and I was also... Um, um, I was also working a job, and God had blessed us in that job, and he had, he had helped us to, uh, to get to a place, a, a position, a place of financial well-being, and we were in that place, and it was a huge decision for us. And I remember praying about, God, what is, what, where should I go? What do you want me to do? Lord, what is your, what is your will in this? What is your will in this? And I'll never forget what God said. It has stayed with me all these 40 years now. God said this, the best place to be is in my will. Because when you are there, you're in harmony with me and at peace, no matter where that is. Can I tell you this morning? There it is. The best place to be is in God's will because in God's will is a place of harmony with him. A place of harmony with him. So this morning, I thought we would end the service this way. I thought we would end the service with communion. It's a way to set our hearts in harmony with God, not just for today, but for this Christmas season. The guys are going to come, if you'll come. And all the guys that are going to help, if you'll come. You don't have to necessarily move the table this morning. We will serve it from here. So this morning, as they serve you, if you will take a cup and hold it, you do not have to be a member of our church. Um, You're a member of the family of God. You can take it this morning. And this is a way for us. As we take communion this morning, this is a way for us to set our hearts in harmony with God for this day and for this season. Even now, Even now, as you receive the elements, just go to a place of prayer. Go to a place of peace yourself about where you are. Lord, this morning we want to be in harmony with you. We want our hearts, our minds, souls, emotions, our conscience 
Lord, to be, to strike the same tone that you have. Holy Spirit, we know that your tone is to glorify Jesus Christ, and we ask that you do that in our lives this morning. Create that harmony this morning, Lord. Create that harmony this morning. Just enter your place of prayer this morning. What better way today to put ourselves in harmony with God than remembering the sacrifice of His Son, Jesus Christ, for us. Lord, this morning as we observe this moment, every time, Lord, it feels special, but this morning it feels a little extra special because of the message this morning. And I pray, Lord, that our hearts and our lives as we remember you Lord Jesus and what you did our hearts and our lives will come into harmony with you we'll play the same chord in our lives in our decisions in our marriages in our families in our finances in our work in our church that we will play the same chord that you want to play in our lives and we'll find peace there and that chord is to glorify you Lord Jesus and who you are and all that you have done for us so this morning, we approach this communion with that in mind. Matthew 26 and 26 says, The Lord took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. He said, take from this, eat of this, each of you. I want you to open your, how can he take your bread in your hand, your wafer in your hand? Lord, we thank you this morning for your broken body. We sang a song a few moments ago about what you did for us and the grace that you gave us, Lord, and it came through your broken body, and we thank you for that. We remember, as you said, remember this. As often as you take a minute, remember me, and we remember you today. Who you are, you're the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, and all that you did, you gave your body a sacrifice for us. I thank you, Lord, that in their brokenness we are whole. And if there's those that need healing in their body this morning, I pray that you would release healing, anointing to them, Lord. Not because of this bread, but because the broken bread, which is your body, Lord. Release healing to them, Lord. If there's any place in life that needs healing, we ask you, Lord, to bring healing today. And we thank you that that healing, that wholeness, comes through your brokenness, the brokenness of your body. And so we remember that today as we celebrate what you did. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's take the bread together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Matthew 26 and 27 said, Then he took bread, he took the cup, and he said, Take from it all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant. Lord, we thank you. The book of Hebrews tells us there's a better covenant bought by a better price, which was the blood that you shed for us. Lord, we thank you that we were not saved by the blood of goats or lambs as in the Old Testament, Lord, but we are saved by the blood of the Lamb, Jesus Christ, that it washes us white as snow, that all of our sins are washed away and covered when we have faith and confidence and hope and put our trust in you, Lord. So this morning, Lord, we remember that. We remember that you gave your blood, your life, that we might have life, abundant life, and eternal life. And we thank you for that. And Lord, we pray this morning that as we are covered in your blood this morning, Lord, that we indeed will have the harmony and the peace of God in our life that you said, Lord Jesus, you give unto us. And we remember it was purchased by your blood today. You put us in right relationship with God and you made a way that our life could live in that relationship and live in harmony. We thank you for it today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's take the cup together. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. Stand on your feet with me, won't you? Lord, as we stand this morning, we just thank you, Lord. You indeed are the peace speaker. I pray that this morning you will speak peace in our lives. Lord, as we start our day, as we are throughout our day, even when we find ourselves in a storm, and when we end our day at a place of rest, speak peace into our lives. You are the peace speaker. We listen for your voice to set the tone for our lives. And we thank you how much, Lord, that impacts and transforms and empowers our life because we walk in harmony with you and at peace. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I encourage you this week to find those places of peace. I also want to remind you, open house tonight. You've got the invitation with the direction and instructions there. If you have any questions about it, give us a call. Until I see you again, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace.